In this movie, we're going to continue along with the if-then statement for strings. Continuing along with the report from the prior lesson, we're going to go ahead and right-click in the formula fields, create new. This time we'll call it if, then string sample. This brings up our formula editor window. In addition to our if and then syntax, we're going to go ahead and pull in client number. Now client number is equal to, and then type in the exact string. The problem with strings, of course, is you have to have impeccable spelling when you're writing formulas. So in this case, I'm going to teach you something else that works a little bit better. Or at least at a minimum, might come in handy. It's called the starts with. This is located here in the operators under the pattern section. In this case, I'm going to say starts with A. Then we'll just put in something simple such as A list clients. Else, this time we're going to make it a compound if the client number Notice how, after I've defined the cases, I also put an exception to catch anything I might have missed. Now, when working with conditionals, keep in mind, if you have a very large data set, sometimes mistakes may happen. You may forget a case or do X, Y, and Z. This comes back to the if-then statement, helping but not being able to eliminate all the data entry errors that may go in on a database side. Also notice that my starts with down here isn't blue. That's because I put an extra space in there. So if I went to go check this formula, like right now, it would give me an error. In this case, by simply putting the starts with back together, the syntax turns blue and all is well. Once I click the check button again, I am clean. Let's go ahead and save and close and observe this one. I'm going to go ahead and scroll over and pull in my if then string sample. I'll put it right between site and rev date. If I want to see the samples, I'm going to go ahead and close this window. And I'm going to sort it so I get my A's and B's first. All I have to do in this case is scroll down, find the client number, pull it over, and I'm going to sort ascending. Now if I scroll down and go a few pages, I finally get to some clients that begin with A. Notice it now says A list clients. If I were to continue on, I would probably get a B list clients, and so on and so forth. Go back to our field explorer and play with the string a little bit more. I could also take this client name and use a technique that we've learned before. Instead of typing in exactly what I need, I'm going to say client number plus a space dash space, all in quotation marks. And I can also point out what type of commission they get by putting in this descriptive field. That means next to each of their client numbers, I'll get a description field telling me what kind of commission they should get. And then for my exception, I'll put whatever exception list. In fact, I may even have to put a warning message to the end user. This is a way for report writers to send out messages if a certain case defined by a user doesn't add up. Let's go ahead and check our formula. Once it's cleaned, save and close. So my A hearts is 10%, but if I go back some, I now get a message saying check com. This is a way for you, again, to help the users identify what potentially could be wrong with a given formula. The bigger your database is, the more cases you can possibly have. Ideally, if the cases become too varied and many, it's something that should be solved on the data input side as opposed to the output, i.e., the report side.